I'm continuing to get so many questions about this stove that I thought that instead of answering them individually in the comments, I would just do this Q&A about the cubic mini wood stove. Hi everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple Live Free and this stove is absolutely amazing. And we are about one week or so away from moving out of our tiny house and into our new home in Virginia. And so I wanted to do this Q&A before we leave here. Um, right now, it's about 10 degrees outside Fahrenheit. And the wind is blowing 30 miles an hour. I bet the wind chill is 20 below. It is really cold outside. And we have our electric heat set at 72 degrees and it hasn't kicked on in hours because this little wood stove right here is doing the job. It's heating it up. In fact, I'm sweltering sitting next to it. But uh, it's just an amazing little stove. Yes, it takes a lot of extra work to uh, process the wood into little pieces like this. But uh, Okay, first of all, people ask why we have such a small stove. It's because we live in 250 square feet. This is an RV, a travel trailer. We can't fit anything bigger. Anything bigger usually has several feet of um, clearance required all the way around it, and the only way to do that would be to set that right in the middle of the living room, and it, there just wouldn't be any room for any of our furniture. So this is the only thing I could find that would actually fit here, but this thing uh, heats the entire house. Um, People ask about fuel. Can I use wood pellets? Can, what about the, uh, the compressed logs that you can buy? What about coal? Those sorts of things. First of all, Cubic Mini Wood Stoves on their uh, website specifically says not to use pellets. I have no idea why, but that's what they say. But let me take it a step further than that. We are preppers. One of our main reasons for having this stove is so that if the power goes out, we can still have heat. But in any kind of a long-term emergency, if I was relying on something that I had to purchase in a long-term emergency, that might not be available. I might not be able to buy coal or I might not be able to buy, uh, <clears throat> you know, pellets. So what I specifically wanted to do was to find something that I wasn't dependent on on the economy anywhere. I wasn't dependent on anyone. With this, I have a couple of big hand saws, big cross-cut saws, two man, you know, one on each side. If there's no gasoline for the woods, for the uh, chains, chainsaw. So I can just go out in the woods and cut all the fuel I need for this. I'm not relying on the economy. I'm not lying, relying on, on money. Um, you know, I, one of the things I believe is going to happen is money is going to collapse. And I'm not relying on that it makes me feel very good and very secure to know that I can always have heat no matter what happens. So that's one thing about um, why we just don't use anything that we have to buy to, uh, to fuel this thing. A lot of people hear how often I have to stoke this and they say, oh, that's absolutely worthless. Cause I have to stoke it about every 30 to 45 minutes and if I don't, it's out in an hour and a half, which means it doesn't go through, burn through the night. So then people say, well, what happens when it, it goes out? You don't have any heat. That's ridiculous. Well, we have electric baseboard heat. I don't need this. I can just turn on my thermostat and it heats the whole place. So we have the thermostat set at, you know, 68 or whatever. And we burn this all day to save electricity. And then at night we stoke it before we go to bed. And then when it goes out, the electric baseboard heat takes over. Simple. If we are traveling for the weekend, we just leave the electric heat on. We're not, we can't burn this if we're gone. We just leave the heat on. It keeps the pipes from freezing and all that. So yes, we use this as our main source of heat, but legally, I guess, the electric baseboard is our main source of heat. Now, how can I have electric baseboard in a, in a travel trailer? It's, it takes too much electricity. Yes, that's because I took the 30 amp service uh, that most uh, travel trailers have, and, I, and since it's permanently set on the property, like a mobile home, I upgraded the 30 amp to actually a 100 amp service so that I would have enough power to be able to put baseboard heaters throughout the whole thing. And it works very well.
So when we're burning it on a regular basis like this, like I said, at night when it goes out, the electric baseboard heat kicks in. But this is our prepper source of heat. And if there was no power and we were relying for this on our, for our heat, we could do one of two things and either one would work. We could set a fire watch where one or the other of us gets up every 45 minutes and stokes it. But I discovered many years ago, because I'm an outdoorsman, <laughs> that I do have done a lot of mountain climbing ice climbing and that sort of thing, high altitude. I discovered a long time ago I can do winter backpacking. I discovered in the army too, I can live in a tent when it's 10 below zero. If you have the right equipment it's no big deal. So if this goes out in the middle of the night and it drops to 20 degrees in here by morning, doesn't matter. We got plenty of blankets. All you have to do is pile on another blanket. You can sleep very warm. Then you just have to get up and stoke it. Start it again. It's not that big a deal. It's very doable in emergency situations. Of course, we don't do that all the time because we have the electric heat. But in a real emergency, that's what we would do. Burn this thing 18 hours a day, sleep under a lot of blankets, and start it again in the morning. A lot of people have asked about cleaning out the ash. Yes, I have to clean it out every day. We start it in the morning and we burn it until about midnight, and then it goes out overnight. And every morning before we start it up, I clean out the ash, which doesn't take long. I got this little tools over here and this little shovel that comes with it. Um, that was an extra that I bought when I bought the stove, this, the tool kit here. But it works really well and it only takes a minute or two because it's such a small amount. It only takes a minute or two to clean out the ash in the morning before I start it again. Also with the issues that I've had with creosote which it seems to be working fine now that I've got it straight up with no elbows and I've got the double wall pipe all the way up it seems to be working much better but a lot of people have suggested that I use those creosote burning logs I tried them at first when I started having problems and you know what I found they're absolutely worthless they didn't do a thing I was just wasting a lot of money and I still had to clean it out every every once a month they, they just never worked for me uh, some of you have said that you've had great results with them. I've tried it a half a dozen times. Nothing. No no results at all. So I don't waste my money anymore. Um, and like I said, I did have to used to clean this out once a month, the creosote. But now that I've got the flu straight up again, so far it hasn't been an issue. So I'm, unfortunately I'm not going to be here all winter to see how it works over the long term because I only just replaced that, you know, a couple months ago. And like I said, we're only going to be in this little tiny house another week. And then we're going to our big house, big house, 900 square feet in Virginia. <laughs> so anyway, those are just some of the common questions that I get about this stove. And uh, I was typing the answer out so many times on the comments that I just decided I'm just going to do a video and try to cover all the basic uh, questions. So uh, if you're interested in this, I know many of you have told me that you've actually bought this because of my reviews, which is really kind of humbling. <laughs> but uh, if you're interested in this, yeah, it's a little bit more work because you got to cut it up small and it doesn't burn as long as a full-size stove does. But in a situation like this, and if you're trying to heat your whole, house, your whole house, forget it. This only does 450 square feet. It'll do two rooms in a big house, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> but in a situation like this, an RV, travel trailer, a sailboat, that's what it's designed for, that's what it's great for. If you have a small shed that's, you know, that you use for a, a workshop or something like that, you just want to fire it up for a few hours while you're out there working, it's great for that sort of thing. It's not going to heat your whole house. So, anyway, I hope that I covered most of the basic questions that you've, you've had, and uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. What? What about the proximity to the um, oh, yes. refrigerator and the fact that it's got that protective thing that really works? Yes, another question I've just recently been getting. Here's our refrigerator right here. And a lot of people have said, why do you have that so close to the refrigerator? You're making the refrigerator work way too hard. Well, first of all, this is a wall, okay? There's a, wall, a wood wall between the stove and the refrigerator. So nothing gets through that wall. Also, this shield is a metal heat shield that's bolted to the wall to keep the fire from catching the wall on fire. So I can touch this side of the wall, the side facing the stove, and it's cool to the touch. 
and on the back side, I mean, none of that heat is getting through to the refrigerator. It's not making the refrigerator work hard. It's blowing all the heat out this way because of the shield, the heat shield, and the wall. In fact, none of the heat gets to the wall. That wall right. is cool. None of the heat yeah. gets to the wall. I can touch the wall back here and it's not hot. So, any other questions that I forgot? Yeah, I just I just thought of that one. Yeah. No, I I think that was everything. Yeah, I, could I think, think of. that's it. So <laughs> I hope you found this helpful if you've had any of those questions. Thanks for watching. I think we're done this time. <laughs> live simple, live free. Be blessed. We'll see you next time.